Good evening, this is Robbie Garner coming to you live from Cedartown, Georgia. Hey, what's up? I got a new song for you tonight and some of the old songs. I'm going to play them again and uh, see if we can eliminate some of the uh, filler stuff that I used on the demonstration. We have played around with a song that I called Wingspan for some reason. It was a random name. It was something that uh, didn't mean anything to me, but sometimes that's the way it works. Uh, later, I'll show you some of the songs that we came up with a little bit earlier. Uh, so let, let's go to the new song first, and uh, let's see if you like this. This is called Wingspan. Fear of disaster, faster and faster, look out man. Live for the 
rest of his life Five billionaires have all the wealth How did they get so lucky, you say? Hey, uh, what'd you think of that, huh? It's only the third version we've made. Uh, it may never be finished. Today was a beautiful day here in northwest Georgia in the Appalachian Highlands of northwest Georgia. There has been a song in my mind all day that haunts me. I can never remember it when I'm sitting down at a keyboard and whenever I think about it, I whistle it or I hum it or both and I try to remember how it, how it goes and I can play it on the computer keyboard, the visual uh, musical typing is as it's called and I managed to record it earlier and I was gonna do something with it and there's always uh, the issue of how to get it from one computer to another one and uh, so that's, that's been my preoccupation all day. I've also uh, had some conversations with people, uh, mostly on Facebook, about the tearing down of statues of historical figures or ideals. And I usually play devil's advocate. I, I really don't care. Um, uh, as I understand it, the Confederate soldier statues that you find in every courtyard around uh, little towns throughout the South and apparently up North in places as far away as uh, Baltimore, Maryland and other places uh, apparently were mass produced by a company in Connecticut and those statues to me are like sort of a public gravestone they're they're not a celebration of anything it's a remorse for days past and uh, maybe other people feel differently about it. I'm told, for instance, that black people are offended or threatened by them. And I can only think that if that's true, I've never heard it from any person of color. Um, to me, it's these people that suffer on behalf of other people that are more worried about them. And maybe that's just my crass opinion. Um, you know, and the rebel flag, you know, the one that everybody's accustomed to seeing, like on uh, the Dukes of Hazard or something like that. That was the battle flag for Virginia. It was incorporated in the Georgia state flag in the 60s, I think, and was a reaction to the civil rights movement, uh, as I understand. Um, but it's not, it wasn't native to Georgia, it was just the one that was uh, more well known. 
it's um, sort of ironic that when Georgia finally got rid of the Confederate flag in their state flag, the thing people don't realize is that what we have now is the actual Georgia Confederate States of America flag. So, you know, you, as uh, an old friend of mine used to say, we traded the devil for a witch. And, you know, if people want to tear down all the statues, that's fine. Um, where, where do you draw the line, though? Um, do you destroy everything that uh, offends somebody is if if you don't like Andy Warhol stuff do you say that's not art and destroy it um, if you don't like my music because I say things that offend you in it is it okay to just destroy it because one or two people don't like it um, that's been going on in uh, some of the online conversations that I've been a part of lately. And like I said, I hope I haven't offended anybody now or at any time. I, I don't really do that on purpose, but... I would have to say that their conversation would be incredibly dull if nobody argued with them. I, I can argue both sides of most arguments. So enough of that. That's the serious stuff. Um, I say we should go into outer space and here's a song called Starship Andromeda. <laughs> Yo. 
Wow, you know, I just showed you all the junk in my basement, including garbage and like an empty Diet Mountain Dew bottle. I'm so disinhibited, I really just don't care. There's um, a whole lot of stuff like that laying around here. Not garbage, but just a lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of wires and they're all tangled up in places and my cats love this room um, I have a little boy cat named Tony that likes to jump up on the keyboards behind me and I was trying to train him not to jump on the keyboards I would say Tony get down and when he jumped down, I pat him on the head and say, good boy. And then eventually it dawned on me that I was teaching him to get on the keyboards. Because if he does, I reward him by patting him on the head. And so all my conditioning, you know, B.F. Skinner would be so disappointed in me that I failed to teach the cat anything except that he should jump on the keyboards and then get down and that's how he gets yeah, a reward and uh, I guess I'm a little bit like that too I'm gonna play something else for you um, this one I would say that this is um, like filler um, hmm, I can't find it. Wow, it's missing. Maybe it's a sign that I shouldn't play it. Oh, there it is. This is this is canned audio. This is like coloring books for adult people. And it's music for hire. This is a Beatles song called If I Needed Someone. And I'd like to dedicate that to uh, my compatriot, James Alton. He's out there somewhere and possibly playing his guitar as we speak. And this, this one is... Uh, my computer playing it, but I didn't make the sequence. It's uh, it's totally canned, but try to like it if you can.
That one also uh, should have been dedicated to all my friends in Hong Kong. I think it's about um, 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning tomorrow there. So if, if I have any fans left in Hong Kong, that one goes out to you as well. I'd like to also thank Robert Cameron for his photography and uh, in particular the pictures of Sam Hancock who co-founded Flex Arstead and I miss him and I think about him every time I come down here for some very obvious reasons. Okay, well, I'm going to play another one. This one is a, a song called Pass Me Now. It's a song that was originally written about people that tailgate and won't get off your ass while you're going down the highway. I drive a older car. It's a 1996 Mercedes-Benz s600 and it has a 12 cylinder engine so if i wanted to do 80 in a slower traffic zone i could easily do that but for some reason people fly up on to the back end of the car and then want to hover there if you speed up or slow down, they 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 are right there behind you. They they're letting you be the meter, and um, so this song's pretty much about that. Um, let's try it out.
All right, well, we're getting close to the end now. This broadcast, uh, once again, I'm Robbie Garner, coming to you live from Cybermecha Studios in beautiful uh, north end of town, Cedartown, Georgia. Um... I thought about something to say, but um, I'd like to uh, dedicate this next one to Marsha. We'll be thinking about y'all. Well, that's pretty much the end of what I have in terms of material prepared for tonight. I was going to do this a little earlier, but I wanted to wait until after the Plutopia broadcast. And I always try to check in on them. Um, and I, 
it it only made sense to wait until it was actually dark here. Hence the title, Now It's Dark. So be safe, be well, and have a good time. This is Robbie Garner. I'll be seeing you.